Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the premium video forecast discussion and public video forecast discussion for Friday, May 20th, 2022. Um, okay, so we have a situation here setting up that has the potential to have very significant impacts uh, on the region uh, for the afternoon and especially for the evening rush hour in the form of a thunderstorm complex. Now, this forecast is... Uh, can be very volatile and changes by the hour. Okay, so I'm gonna put that out there first. But I'm gonna explain what the threat is, what we're looking for, what we're gonna be watching for throughout the uh, day, and uh, why this could be a um, significant concern for the region. So currently right now we have a stationary front to our south and a stationary front to our north, and kind of basically waves of warmer air starting to push their way northward. So we have temperatures in the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior with some areas of fog, upper 50s to mid 60s around the Poconos, northern New Jersey and New York City metro, and then towards southeastern Pennsylvania and central and southern New Jersey, you have temperatures in the lower to mid 60s, even pushing into the upper 60s to lower 70s in southern New Jersey, with more sky cloud cover, not as much fog. Winds are light and variable right now, but they'll develop more out of the southeast as we go on through the day and gradually shift over to the south as we move towards this evening. Now, here is our complex. Okay, now you see how it's kind of spinning here. Here's a scenario. This front is lifting northward, and with it, moisture in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, this stationary front, this has real tropical air behind it, and will set up our very hot and humid weather conditions for tomorrow. This is lifting northward as well. And you have this little disturbance, little short wave, in between this that is riding the gradient of the temperature and moisture gradient, okay? And that is lifting northward, and eventually it'll act kind of like uh, moving on a train track and has the potential of barreling in right into uh, eastern Pennsylvania, central and southern New Jersey, New York City metro. Uh, you could even see a few thunderstorms outlined. You could see some of those showers starting to approach uh, for northeastern Pennsylvania. This type of forecast is influenced by a variety of factors, including the development of our shortwave, and also influences from our geographical alignment with our pole, with our Appalachian Mountains and how the outflow boundaries of this thunderstorm interact with those boundaries and also the various troughs we have hanging around here. Okay, so this leads to a lot of volatility, a lot of chaos in the atmosphere. But what stands out that we didn't really see yesterday, uh, but we clearly see it in the observations now, is the rotation involved in the short wave. Now, 850 millilitres, you can make out a brief trough here around the Ohio River Valley, but you can see the overall theme here of our Western Atlantic Ridge pumping tropical air right into our neck of the woods. When we look at 700 millibars, you see it's a little bit stronger, a little bit more well-defined, and at 500 millibars, even more defined. And you can see it's basically riding this gradient and the wind's going from west to east here as the tropical air lifts northward and then interacts with the polar jet stream with the ridge up here. So a lot of interaction of air masses and clearly a nice vigorous shortwave embedded within that flow uh, that is developing from initially 850 millibars and now all the way up to 500 millibars with this Western Atlantic Ridge. So you can start to see this gradient pretty nicely here, okay? So here's your moisture gradient, here's your temperature gradient, your winds at 850 millibars all from the southwest, but your winds at 500 millibars coming in from the west. So what you have here at 300 millibars also coming in from the northwest. So what you have here is a cyclonic flow from the surface on up to the uh, 200 upper level wind, upper level uh, zone. So you start your winds at the surface at the southeast, then you veer to the southwest at the mid levels, and then you see these winds coming in from the west and northwest at the upper levels. So that is a cyclonic flow as you move up into the atmosphere. And you can see all of these little upper level short waves associated with this 
environment that is developing. And you can even also make out a little bit of the twist here at 500 millibars. Let's pull up 850 millibars and you can see the jet streak is starting to develop associated with this whole uh, dynamic setting up. So you have the observations here setting in. And so you have variable cloud cover. You have temperatures getting warmer for, as you move south. Obviously, temperatures in the mid to upper 80s expected over the Philadelphia metro. So obviously, more instability is going to be involved. And with that, you can see the mid-level lapse rate starting to increase and push northward. That's the instability in the atmosphere. You can see your precipitate water values steadily increasing all morning. And here's the core of our shortwave strong lifting from the surface on up to the mid-levels is enhancing your precipitate water values in this little pocket right here that is expected to march its way towards the region. And you can see some of the wind shear associated with this whole scenario starting to lift north as well. So my point here is that all of the factors involved here, all the observations are all pointing to trouble. So on the infrared satellite picture, one thing I've been watching for is, okay, is this showing any signs of collapsing rapidly? Because sometimes you get these MCSs developing in the morning, but you can see a rapid fall off, okay? But what we're seeing instead is one feature starts to weaken, but another feature forms right behind it. So this is a sign of sustainability. Now, model guidance has a hard time picking this up, and sometimes you have to look, go through a variety of models to say, okay, which one matches the current state right now? Right now, that would be the HRR guidance. That we're going to have to continue to update that throughout the day to compare how the factors all evolve, okay? How they shift from a, a whether it matches the, the current observation. So the HRR right now is looking pretty convincing, but that can change in the next two, three hours. And uh, the key here is to keep you informed so that way you're not caught unaware of a powerful thunderstorm slamming into your neck of the woods. And you can see again, the water vapor satellite picture, pretty impressive here. You can clearly make out the short wave here embedded within this entire pattern that is starting to develop. So let's take a look at the model guidance here. Here at uh, the synoptic model, or as we call it, the European model, synoptic means large scale. So it doesn't get into mesoscale. But what you could see here is a model guidance is picking up a very nice vigorous shortwave, but it's having a hard time dealing with a lot of the convective issues surrounding that shortwave. So that's when you use a mesoscale model, which is a small scale model, which we'll get to in a moment. Again, you have to use the right tools for the job, okay? You don't use a sledgehammer to, to you know, nail in a uh, small nail. You use a sledgehammer to take out a large wall. Well, in this case, we need to nail down a small nail. So here we have, over the next couple of days, just so you get an idea here, our Western Atlantic Ridge building, that's going to increase 500 millibar heights, allow for sinking air. So tomorrow and Sunday, really, I would not be surprised Sunday as well, with this ridge in place you have the sinking air and so that's going to enhance our temperatures tomorrow so tomorrow's going to be all about the heat index pushing in the mid to upper 90s with our surface temperatures in the lower to mid 90s in the delaware river valley cooler on the coast and over the interior but still muggy and uh that is enhanced by the sinking air initially on saturday tomorrow of this ridge axis but we all still have to watch out for thunderstorms because of a sea breeze front okay so you have that factor, and then on Sunday night, we have a cold front that's going to be moving through. Again, the upper level support is not that impressive, but we have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So at the very least, maybe they won't get to severe levels, but they'll be capable of producing some very heavy downpours. So just be aware of that Sunday night. By Monday, we clear out, and then we start our process all over again for next week with the warm front approaching and our Western Atlantic Ridge battling troughs coming in from the West. Get used to this. This is going to be our theme going through much of this summer. Just want to show the precipitate water values here. Again, notice the rise here 
the European guys is trying to pick up on this scenario. That's why you get this bullseye here. This is a clear sign of convective feedback error. Um, trying to handle all the different vortices. So the model guidance, the synoptic model guidance is trying to pick up on this threat, but it's having a hard time doing so. So this is when you, you revert to uh, mesoscale models like the NAM and the HRR. So let's take a look at the HRR right now. Uh, let's refresh this real fast and make sure we got the latest data coming in. And there we go. Now, here is our shortwave this morning. Okay, and it does a pretty good job picking up exactly what is actually happening here. And you can see rotating through. And then it starts to re-intensify again while moving into eastern Pennsylvania by around 4 p.m. Now, here is what's going to be very key in this scenario. How much cloud cover breaks up here from the initial waves of, of showers coming in from this whole scenario which we have back here and what type of influence will we have from outflow boundaries from previous showers and thunderstorms so that's going to be a factor that's going to kind of be unknown but this scenario here opens up the threat for an impressive gust front here you see how it's kind of bowing out here these thunderstorms here will be capable of becoming severe in this scenario and with the cyclonic flow of the atmosphere you open up the potential for some of these thunderstorms to produce intense downpours frequent lightning because you're increasing your precipital water values over 1.5 inches possibly pushing up to two inches and you are introducing the threat for hail and downburst wind gusts over 65 miles per hour what that basically is, is that you're lifting a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and then it slams down to the surface like a hammer or, or basically if you pick up a rock and drop it in a pond you could see the the result of that outflow the way everything kind of expands outward okay that's the same idea and then of course in this scenario where you have a cyclonic flow you could see a tornado develop now will it look exactly like this don't know but what i can tell you is that this whole environment is favorable for this type of complex to swing on through the region. Now, whether it's focused on Philadelphia to central New Jersey or the Poconos to New York City or from Philadelphia to Atlantic City, I don't know that until we get to the hour. So definitely follow along on Twitter for updates on this scenario. But you can see, uh, if you're going to baseball games tonight for the Phillies, the Yankees, well, um, guess what? It's going to be a bit unsettled, so definitely be prepared for the potential for some long delays in that scenario and possibly even uh, postponement with these damaging winds. Uh, if you're a Mets fan, guess what? You're going to be dealing with snow in Colorado, but that's that's neither here nor there. Just It's funny. It's We're talking about 80s and thunderstorms, and then let's go to Colorado over snow, so there we go. Um, so you can see this scenario here playing out, okay? So this is... I'm. Giving you a warning there, this forecast is very volatile. It's very much uncertain because we're watching this hour by hour, but I want you to be aware of what the concerns are. Temperatures today in this environment will range from the upper 60s to mid 70s on Long Island, upper 70s to mid 80s along the immediate coast and over the interior and mid to upper 80s in the Delaware River Valley. And that basically tells us where our boundaries are all setting up in this scenario. So a wide variety of boundaries setting up. Tonight into tomorrow morning, we might have to deal with some fog, some locally dense fog from the moisture hanging around here. Low temperatures will range from the upper 50s to mid 60s on Long Island and mid 60s to lower 70s everywhere else. Again, a little bit more influence from the Atlantic Ocean on the south side of Long Island. Everyone else gets that transport of air mass coming from the Tennessee River Valley. So the difference in moisture transport and, and air mass transport will be key in this scenario. So definitely watch out for some locally dense fog tomorrow morning as a result. Then tomorrow afternoon, hazy, hot, and humid. There is a threat for an isolated thunderstorm. We're about to watch the sea breeze front, which is again another microscale slash mesoscale factor that we're going to keep an eye on. Temperatures are going to be surprisingly uh, oppressive and frankly brutal, especially since we haven't had this this type of air mass in quite some time. So definitely be prepared.
okay? Don't play around with this, okay? Drink plenty of water. Watch out for your kids and the elderly because this is going to shock the system. Temperatures on Long Island, your cool spot in the upper 70s to mid 80s. Along the immediate coast, mid 80s to lower 90s. Over the interior, upper 80s to lower 90s. In the Delaware River Valley, especially around Philadelphia, central New Jersey, basically the I-95 corridor, Lower to mid-90s are expected, and watch out for the heat index in the mid-90s to possibly touching 100 degrees. Hazy, hot, humid, and just very uncomfortable. On Sunday, we get a slight shift in winds more from the south, southwest, and um, what you're going to end up with is fog in the morning with low temperatures ranging from the mid-60s to lower 70s. High temperatures on Sunday, still hazy, hot, and humid. Maybe not as hot as Saturday because we don't have the ridge suppressing uh, the air mass and causing sinking air. So you're going to have your high temperatures ranging from the mid-70s to lower 80s on Long Island, mid-80s to lower 90s everywhere else. And we're going to have to watch out for an isolated shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening as our cold front approaches. And then in the evening into the early morning hours on monday that cold front's going to be moving through widespread showers and thunderstorms not convinced yet of severe thunderstorms but all the moisture in the atmosphere definitely some heavy downpours here so definitely keep an eye on that on monday high pressure takes hold look for clearing skies much cooler low temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to mid 50s over the interior upper 50s to mid 60s along the coast high temperatures will range from the mid to upper 60s over the interior, lower to mid 70s along the coast. And then on Tuesday, much cooler air mass as high pressure builds in from basically the Canadian Maritimes, but more of a northeasterly wind. Look for low temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to lower 50s over the interior, mid to upper 50s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the mid 60s to lower 70s over the interior mid 60s to lower 70s along the immediate coast and lower to mid 70s over the delaware river valley on wednesday a warm front will approach with increasing clouds throughout the day some showers in the evening look for low temperatures to range from the mid 40s to lower 50s high temperatures will range from the lower to mid 60s around long island upper 60s to mid 70s along the coast and mid to upper 70s over the interior now if this warm front moves through fast enough you could spike up into the upper 60s to mid 70s in the delaware river valley so what to watch out for that on thursday the warm front lifts north watch out for scattered showers in the meantime look for low temperatures in the upper 50s to mid 60s high temperatures will range from the upper 60s to mid 70s over the interior in new york city metro and upper 70s to mid 80s in the philadelphia metro so that Warm front boundary stalls out around the region, and that's going to lead to the divide of the temperatures and the threat for scattered showers. An air low pressure system and cold front swing is on through on Friday with periods of showers, possibly a few embedded thunderstorms. Low temperatures will range from the upper 50s to mid 60s over the interior, mid to upper 60s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the upper 60s to lower 70s over the interior, upper 60s to mid 70s along the coast and mid to upper 70s in the Delaware River Valley. That is your forecast discussion for today. We'll be keeping an eye on this thunderstorm complex throughout the day, so follow along on Twitter. And as always, stay safe out there.